student has asked how you derive these, how do you make sense of deriving these, how do you remember how to do it? And so I made this, I'm making this video to show you. Now there is already an extended uh, written treatment in topics and then there's a shorter one at the end of the review packet, but it might help to hear me talk about it and go through it, so I will do that. And I'll try to give you some hints along the way for how to do this. <clears throat> Derive means to prove or show where it comes from. And the first hint is to have these memorized. If you have them memorized, then it'll be a lot easier for you to know where you're going, like what your target is, what you're trying to work towards. So you absolutely want to have these memorized, or at least maybe on a sheet of paper in front of you. Okay, you start with these equations up here. I'll write them down. You start with these definitions like average velocity is defined as delta x over t. That's a definition. You start with the definition of average acceleration, which we can just call A because A is constant uh, in these problems. So A is defined as delta V over T. Then you also have to know what delta V means because if you look at our equations, and this is the advantage of having them memorized. If you have the, our equations memorized, you should instantly realize, wait, V average is not in our equations. Delta V is not in our equations. So we want to combine what you have here, what's given in a way that it gets rid of these things that are not in our equations, and that brings us to delta V. Delta V is defined as Vf minus Vi. And then finally, there was a theorem that was proved that if the acceleration is constant, there's another way to write V average, exactly the way you would think an average would be, Vi plus Vf over 2. These are your givens meaning you're allowed to assume that they are true. So these are starting points. You can start with these. So that is the second hint, is that the, all four of these will be used and they're your starting points. And the third hint is your tool. You will use substitution, substituting. That's really the main tool. You can do some algebra rearranging, but I take it for granted that that's already a tool you know. But what might be new to you is this idea of using substitution to get the equation you want. Okay, so the way I will do this, I will take the um, answers that are at the end of your review packet, and I'm going to cover up the actual work, but leave the givens here. So these are the four givens that you're allowed to start with. And let's think about how we would derive or prove equation one this first one here. Look at what it has, these four letters. So you look at your givens and you look for those four letters. We're not going to use this one because that has A in it. right? But if we look at this one and this one, it has all the letters. These two combined have all the letters we want and we're going to use substitution or maybe an easier way to think of this first one is since this on the right equals V average and that on the right equals V average, then these two must be equal to each other. So for this, I can just say, and see I've numbered, this is the way people do proofs, they number each equation. So this is called equation one, that's called equation two. So I can just write for, to solve um, for uh, the first equation, I can just say set equation one equal to equation two. Or I'm sorry, equal, sorry, equal to equation four. And that does the trick because this equals V average and that equals V average. These two are equal to each other. So let's do that. Delta x over t must be the same thing as vi plus vf over 2 because they both equal v average. And this is okay. You can just write set equation 1 equal to equation 4. Now, you see this is not in the final form that you have it if you've got them memorized or in front of you. So at this point, you must use a tool called rearranging. And that is something you can already know how to do from your algebra classes. You just are used to doing it with numbers. But the same rules apply to letters. In the final equation, you have delta x by itself. So you have to rearrange until you get delta x by itself. Well, that's easy here. You just multiply both sides by t. I'll write t over 1. This t over this t makes a 1. This t doesn't go away, so you wind up with delta x equals vi plus vf over 2 times t. Well, that's the equation. That's the first equation, so you're done. That's how you prove the first equation. Okay, let's look at the second equation. All right, the second equation, you want to work towards this. vf equals vi plus at. So you look up here. This one's actually easier than the first one. 
the target equation has a in it. Well, of all of these, this is the only one with a in it, so let's start with that. a is defined as delta v over t. Okay, look at the equation that's our target. We're trying to work towards this. Well, that's got an a and a t. This has an a and a t, so that's good. But this has delta v and this doesn't. So the thing we need to get rid of is the delta v. So we look up here. Where do I see a delta v? Right there. So I write, but delta v equals vf minus vi. And when you're doing proofs, it doesn't matter if you write three lines or two lines. Delta v equals vf minus vi. So we're going to do a substitution. That's why I said that's your main tool in these is substitution. You're going, since delta v equals this, you're going to replace this delta v with that. So you get a equals this. Now, instead of delta v, vf minus vi over t. Okay, this is not in the final form, so you have to do some rearranging, and that's just algebra, but you're doing algebra with letters. First, I'm going to multiply both sides by t. That t over that t makes a 1. Then, look what I get. I get at equals vf minus vi, but in our final equation, we have vf by itself on one side. So, I'll add vi to both sides. And, get, and I'll switch the sides, and I get VF equals VI plus AT. That's the thing I'm trying to prove, and we're done with the second equation. Okay, now we come to the third equation. For both the third and the fourth, you have to do something a little bit different. You're allowed to assume that you've already proven the first two. So there they are, the first two. You're allowed to assume that you've already proven them. And now we look at the third equation, look at that third equation, and look what letter is missing. What letter is not in this one? VF. So then you look up here and you realize this has VF and this has VF. We have to get rid of it. Okay, so this is the way we can do that. Delta X equals VI plus over 2T. And see, I'm writing things in red that we're going to get rid of. VF. But VF equals vi plus at. So once again, we're going to do substitution. vf means the same thing as that. So I'm going to replace that vf with this because I want to get rid of it because it's not in the equation, my target equation that I want. So what I get is delta x equals vi. All that's still the same, vi plus. But instead of vf, I write this, vi plus at. Okay, I've done the substitution, and all the rest is the same, over 2 times t. Okay, now you rearrange, combine, like that's vi plus vi makes 2vi. Simplify t, multiply t through it, and you will get the third equation. You will get this. The fourth equation is done in a similar way, but look which letter I get rid of. In this fourth equation, there is no letter t. So you're going to do the same thing up here that we did for equation 3, but you have to do more work. You have to solve this for t first. Get what it is, and then substitute that into here for t, and then do algebra to simplify it. It's a lot of algebra. It involves using FOIL, so it is tricky, but I do it in the handout in topics and at the end of the review packet.